Hello, everybody. Welcome to Planet Sky FF, the world where everything revolves around fifty thousand pounds. My name's Such, and my name is James. Uh, in the same way that we started the FPL podcast on Monday, it feels like a little bit of time since we spoke about this. Again, a lot of fixtures have passed in between uh, me being away and uh, you having Ian Parron on and uh, talking some sense on Sky for a change. Um, have you, wh- wh- what's your rank? I have no idea. We've not we've not discussed and spoken. You were around two three hundred last time we spoke. One hundred and fifty seven. So you've had a bit of a, a jump. But that, up. but that wasn't from this week. That was it from, was from last week. From previous, yeah, same. I did it. I think one fortieth on Saturday. I think. Okay, that um, was your peak. And then came back down to. I was pretty. Much, I'm pretty sure I was about 160th going into this week. So near enough where I'm at. It's tough. It's tough to make the gains now, right? Because you look at the ownership of players in the top 1K. You've got like four or five are all kind of above 90 percent ish now right so yeah you're really relying on them other players it doesn't help when you buy a player and you don't turn up that's also not helpful in who, one who particular did you case buy? and so jared bowen on sunday he obviously picked up this hip injury at wolves and there's a, an element of is he won't he and he's ruled out for you tomorrow night isn't he uh yes uh, so i hear so that's suggests enough to me to think there's every chance he wouldn't play against Fulham. In any case, I was kind of the thinking, well, these Leverkusen games are so important. If he's not at 100%, there's no guarantee he'll play against Fulham next Sunday. And I've been tempted by Malo Gusto for a few weeks. I'd, I'd kind of nearly invested in him before. I'd look at it again. And the key clincher for me was what it what it enabled next going into this Sunday. See, so yeah, obviously he's not turned up this week, but it it's now enables me. I can go to um, Gabriel and Saka this week and have zero point one left in the bank, and that was the key clincher in the move of. And I may even go something different like Rice or Havertz, but it was that best possibility for Arsenal, the two most expensive ones, to have that possibility to do it. So Gusto's enabled that, but obviously he didn't turn up. Um, but he was just sick, so I think it's still a decent one as an enabler to have from now till the end of the season. Nice. Uh, I didn't make any transfers this weekend, James. We'll talk about that in a second. But again, my rank rise, I'm up to 3,300, which considering I'd been somewhere around four and a half to five for what feels like probably about four months, um, that three and a half thousand was uh, pretty decent in the end to get up to. That was on the back of 207 points the week before, um, which gave me a game week rank of about 2,700, which is pretty okay for an individual week. At 210, um, if you were of interest for that week. Yeah. And did you make any transfers? Oh, yeah. I must have. You probably didn't, right? I made, no, I made three that oh, week. Oh, yeah. I, I also did three that week. Yeah, yeah. I moved, obviously, I moved Watkins on, which uh, proved okay for that week, but um, maybe not overall. I moved Ariola on because obviously he was injured. I moved Ariola on to David Rea, uh, was quite straightforward for me. I moved Romero on to Saliba, because I'd had no Arsenal coverage. Um, that was quite straightforward for me. And I moved Watkins on to Salah, because I didn't have Salah and captained him. So those three were pretty straightforward. Yeah. The only I, difference in their moves, moves was I'd, I'd gone Zabani to Saliba rather than Romero. That was the only difference right. in our moves. Cool. I did the exact same as you otherwise. Yeah, and so ended up 207 points there. And then I got 80 this week. Um, my only no-show this week, James, was Foden, um, who didn't play. And we'll talk about that in a second as well, because I think last night's Champions League doesn't help at all for Arsenal and Man City for this upcoming weekend. Um, so I'm feeling OK at 3,300. I've got Raya and Saliba set there from Arsenal, and I'll add to that on Sunday. Um, I've got Van Dyke and Salah set there for Liverpool. Um, so they've obviously got fixtures all the way through now in this kind of blank, gappy kind of period. I've got Dominic Solanke sitting there, and I don't think he's too bad a hold because, again, he's got that FPL double game week coming up. So he's got three fixtures where some might have only one. It's not Everyone else though. in my team. No, he's not, but it's fine. But I'm not going to burn a transfer to get rid of him. Definitely not going to burn a transfer to get rid of him. I mean, we talked about Villa and Wolves. They're defensively not in great shakes at the moment, so maybe there's going to be opportunity for him. And even this weekend, Man United. All my other players, James, are going to be binned on Sunday. That means three Man City, 
in Holland, Rodri Foden, Cole Palmer. Uh, sorry, Cole Palmer's staying. Uh, Scott Sonny. Too. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sonny. I meant Sonny. Palmer's the other one. Sorry, who's staying throughout this period? Uh, Sonny is gone after Saturday, and Van Heck will be gone after Saturday as well. So that's Rodri Foden, Holland, Son, Van Heck will all be binned on Sunday slash Monday, but most likely it'll be Sunday. And I'll just steam into Liverpool and Arsenal. Really, I might add. I might add one. West Ham if Kudus is in the team or something like that but really I'm just going to go into those and um, I'll come back to Man City when they've got the Brighton game and just captain it could be KDB, Haaland could not play could be anything really so hopefully off the back of like having five transfers this weekend if I can get inside the top 2k I'd be like super happy with that um, it's going to be quite difficult but I'd be happy with that How many transfers left? 18 Yeah yeah, it's understandable under that. So for yeah, me, with just steam in. 12 left, yep. Roger and Haaland are probably going to stay for me. And like I said, Romero and Son to Gabriel and Saka, I've got 0.1 spare to be able to make that move. That's the most likely for me as it stands. But you know, Rice, Havertz, maybe even a differential with Trossard has picked up a little bit of form. Might look at something like that. But yeah, I'm going to leave myself the Gabriel and Saka option. That'll take me to four Arsenal, plus then Van Dijk and Salah oh. mm-hmm. to have the six across the, the teams. I think mean, it feels like it's more go Arsenal than Liverpool for me, particularly on the likes of Gabriel and Saka. This is why I favour that is you do fancy they're going to play the games. Mm-hmm. I don't think Arsenal's fixtures are easy enough to think, all oh, Saka will Mass necessarily rotation, get a break. Yeah. Same with Gabriel, whereas Havertz, I quite like to punt, actually, but yeah, I could see him missing, say, the Wolves game on Saturday the 20th or, or something like that. You won't see the team that day either. So I think if I can go Saka and Gabriel and cover it off, that's probably what I'm liable to do. I can't finish first at this stage, so I'm just scraping to try and get the best of it to get towards the top 100. I, have a key I still want to get, so I still want a top 1,000 finish, I reckon, but I think it's going to be hard. Top you... Top 2K... Doable, but top thousand, I'm still going to push for. You're very capable of what you got left. Key point on Manchester City, I think this is really, really relevant. So, absolutely, you look at after Luton on Saturday, and then you look at, say, Arsenal and Liverpool, both as it stands, playing three times in between. You think, well, come off um, and get players, even if it's, you know, people like McAllister, consistent beast, Declan Rush, just come off it all and then go back when they play Brighton Thursday, 25th. I think there's two real problems with that. The one is, I think, you want to look at Manchester United, Newcastle that midweek as well because of the entry points on Wednesday the 24th and then the good fixtures and then the extra fixtures that come afterwards. And we definitively know Manchester United have a single game day as well now, which we'll come back on to. Um, But the bigger problem actually is with City itself. So the Brighton fixture on Thursday the 25th can still move back to Wednesday the 24th, right? Yep. If that fixture moves the night in the forest fixture the following weekend will also move from the Sunday to the Saturday. Under that circumstance, when you want to go back, you're going to find it really difficult. Your only way back will be to Manchester City from Arsenal, basically, uh, on Wednesday the 24th. So after Arsenal will play Chelsea, which you can do, but that's going to cut you off of bits of Manchester United and Newcastle if you want to have some of that. Um, and I don't like that. So for yeah, me, I want to I, I want to keep them in at the moment, Rodri and Haaland at, at least. Like, but part of my strategy at the moment, you mentioned Solanke, is looking at Solanke to a Manchester City player on Thursday the 25th. But if the game moves back to a Wednesday, that's, that's aborted. Yeah, I understand that totally. Um, I, I, I get that completely. A lot of the questions that we've had in on, on uh, X, or not, not a lot, but there are the ones that I've seen revolve around the fact that it's two transfers. So it's not a daisy chain where you're looking at is it worth the one transfer? Because you're going to want to go back. So is that coming off Man City worth it? Where I've got three of them, if I was to leave one in just as a safety blanket, if I didn't want to go back for whatever reason, I'd probably leave Rodri, you know, as just my captain. And I'm happy yeah, to stick that. the armband. The number of times we've uh, gone hauling with the armband where Rodri's outscored in this season, I don't even want to go back and count. And I think the difficulty for even this weekend, though, with Luton, is what happened last night against uh, Real Madrid. Let's talk about fixtures in a second. I've figured something out. J- James, does anyone from Sky, 
do you think listen to the pod as in sky sports itself yeah sky fantasy sky whatever please say yeah. no. just say no i uh, know no okay good because i've discovered james in my in my adventures in portugal vpn don't work mate oh okay yeah i've been we, trying to i've, I've been trying to use the app now. though am i trying to use the app yeah, where are you yeah. trying to use no, it? i was using the app so yeah uh, don't that's your first problem don't use I it. i had to offer i've had a few <laughs> uh mares it was the weekend before so this weekend i let it go because i knew there wasn't any big moves that i needed to make on the the, the sunday and what have you uh, i wanted to save some back but the week before when it was the midweek fixtures oh mate i had nightmares i've discovered now that you need to get a, a, a GPS emulator to make it work. I spoof that I'm sitting at my house in London, switch off the Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi, no VPN, and just the GPS emulator, go off the mobile data, and I can still play and win Sky. And I still have a British passport, so they can't sue me. <laughs> have you so, got a home address in the UK, though? Uh, yeah, my mum and dad. I still live at home with my mum and dad. I'm 43 and I'm proud. <laughs> so it's having a few nightmares. Um, Fixtures-wise, we know kind of basically the, the layout now, game week 36. But where I was saying, obviously, um, there was a feast of football last night with, with Madrid and uh, City and obviously Arsenal, Bayern Munich. And the fact that both of those games ended in a draw now, I think, does get people a little bit nervous because... As good as City were for long periods in terms of possession, Real Madrid can still hurt them. We saw it time and again on the counter-attack and stuff that you didn't feel like at any point Real Madrid can still hurt them. They'll know that. And Arsenal being at home yesterday have just gone and conceded to your boy Harry Kane back in town and doing the business um, from the spot means that they're both going to have eyes on next week at the weekend. And so hanging on to players for Luton, you're going to be like, well, they may not even play against Luton. And that's going to only fuel the jumping off urge in a lot of people anyway. I, I, I don't think this weekend is too much of a problem. Look, with City, you can get the rotation anyway. But for City, the space... And they play four, on the Saturday, so... Yeah, the space in these four days and then four days. I think Arsenal's fixture is tough enough against Villa that they're not just going to like mass rotate or anything like that. I feel like the Wolves or the Chelsea games are probably more likely to be the ones where Arsenal shove it about, but I don't think they will so much. I don't think it was a scenario last night, Serge, that we'd have looked at either team and thought, are oh, they going to mass rotate in the Champions League court final next week? It was only if City went to Madrid and won 3 or 4 nil or something. Yeah. I don't think there was a circumstance that Arsenal would have won the game that meant they rotated in Munich next week. Even if they'd won 3 nil, if they get an early goal, you're potentially under it, aren't you? Yeah. So I don't think we'd be surprised by that. I don't think this weekend is too much of an issue. The issues lie later on. So I think the Wolves or the Chelsea game may be for Arsenal because what you've then got, once you put the, the, the Bayern Munich game in the middle, it's Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday. And there's no guarantee that anyone plays all four of them games. And with mm. City later on, their circumstance where if the Brighton game stays on the Thursday night, they'll have a scenario where they have Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, and their three Premier League fixtures are Brighton away, Forest away, Wolves at home. Now, over those sort of fixtures, I think you can definitely expect some form of rotation that includes nearly anybody from that perspective. And of course, if they've won as well, then you go into the next midweek and they play again. So you could it could be this Tuesday afterwards in the Champions League, for example. So I think City, the problem comes from when you want to go back in and an understanding that even a Rodri might get left out. Like I, I think particularly say for like Wolves at home, if City is still in the Champions League, I can see Rodri not playing that game. I think Forrest away and Brighton, certainly Brighton away will want him. No doubt about it. And the temptation will be that the team that he picks at Brighton, I think will be quite strong. And that if the game stays on the Thursday, that's everybody's re-entry point. So I'm not, the kind of of the persuasion to think I'll go too heavy on City and probably just looking at adding one more back at that point. But I, I think, again, yeah, we're reminded that that game can move to the Wednesday and it might be difficult to go back, i.e. the only entry points for Arsenal. So from your perspective, so where you're selling, I don't mind the idea of selling Haaland rather than Rodri because you've got more money to play with. All I would say to you is, Make sure you're in a position you can go from Saka to Holland. Holland back. That's yeah. the of exact. Course, leave the money. You want the that money, mm. just the money from Saka to Holland as your worst case scenario, 
say, okay, yeah, I need to I need to get the big man back in. That's yeah. that's the one I think you're you're gonna want to do. Cool. The City Brighton right. game moves back to Wednesday the twenty fourth. If City play in the Champions League the following Tuesday, that's right. what will also affect Forest and City's game on the following weekend. So that would move from the twenty eighth to the twenty seventh. If that game moves, then Everton Brentford will move from the Saturday to the Sunday. Similarly, if Arsenal play in the Champions League on that Tuesday, which will be uh, date such. Uh, the 30th, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the thirtieth. Yes, correct. Then Arsenal, Tottenham moves back to the lunchtime kickoff on Saturday, twenty seventh, and then we're, therefore West Ham, Liverpool moves to the twenty eighth. And I think that's a key point as well. Is on Liverpool because Liverpool got the same problem after this weekend, right? If that West Ham game stays on the Saturday at twelve thirty, Liverpool play Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday lunchtime. Even Salah's not going to start all four of them games. Mm. This is, that's why I don't want to go any extra for Liverpool. Now, this weekend, we haven't got the answers for what's going to happen yet. We do ahead of the next one. But for Liverpool and Arch- Arsenal, the entry point is quite clearly this Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, um depends. I mean, I think some will stick and some will twist and we'll know after uh, after the next couple of weeks who was right. Was it, was it the stickers or the twisters? I think like you need to. Everyone needs to go and invest in Arsenal and Liverpool this weekend, unless they've Just obviously how got many. Yeah, very and, large and again, it depends it. on the uh, transfer count, mate. So, like me with eighteen, go ham. You, 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 with 12, you can't maybe look at a team house. that's got three for zeros, and they're going for the title and not want to go in for them. Yep. But I think particularly with I think Liverpool's circumstance over this short period is possibly worse than than Arsenal's. Um, there is also the case as well to say, right, well, if even if the West Ham game does move back to the Sunday, that might help your spacing a bit better. But then when you want to move it on, if if the Brighton City game is moved to the Wednesday as well, where are you moving it to? It's probably going to be Tottenham Thursday the second. Probably. Okay. And you kind what of do we feel, know about 36, sorry, I was saying as well. Well, with the way it looks now, the entry point for Tottenham as it stands will be Sunday the 28th against Arsenal, which feels wrong. But at that point, Tottenham are going to have a six for three over the majority of teams in the league if that game stays on a Sunday. Yeah, and four and... of those six are Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, City. <laughs> yeah. But with with a Sonny or an attacking player, but, but even... and even the passing tiers and stuff, it might be there. Sonny can return in these games. We know that. Of I've course already, he can. I've already, of course I mean, can. one of my plans has potentially got Brennan Johnson at one stage. I think it's a really good differential to keep an eye on. Romero will still hit passing tier in some of them games. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits passing tier in all of them. Even in, even in some of them bigger ones, it's just how the game goes and stuff. Don't expect a clean sheets with it is all I'd add on to that. And even like Vicario would probably be popular at that stage, just on pure fixtures. So just, yep. just on pure fixtures. So the Chelsea-Tottenham game has now gone Thursday the 2nd of May, which is a week earlier than most of us had anticipated. As it stands, as I said, it makes the Tottenham re-entry point really clear of actually the Arsenal game. Even if you get two pointers that week, it'd be worth going earlier off the majority of teams. Chelsea, you you will almost definitely be waiting till Thursday the 2nd, but I, I'm going to guess a lot of people be happy just with Palmer, maybe. Certainly at this point, as I said, I've added Gusto. You can obviously enter on Monday night. That's your point, really, is to look at Chelsea Monday night again with Everton at home. The Arsenal game's the Tuesday. That's not a great entry point, actually, and it's just the Arsenal game. And then it's Villa on the Saturday afterwards so the Tottenham game on Thursday the second is probably the entry point for them but obviously the following weekend they play West Ham on a Sunday that's confirmed now so there's a case to say wait even longer for Chelsea yep. if you do want to add more Palmer so, is Mr Consistent and he's at a good price I, I think he's just going to sit through for me there's no reason to take him out no absolutely not no if they were playing Saturday this week you could make a case of an off and on maybe but it's price as well yeah it's he's, not enab- it. he's enabling you the other transfers as well so that weekend of 36 we've now got two confirmed single game days one of them I don't think is too bad that's Monday the 6th is Crystal Palace against Manchester United and that's primarily because as I said I think there'll be a bit of interest in Manchester United from Wednesday the 24th me and Ian both spoke last week about ideally maybe going to Anana at that point mm-hmm. 
and that in itself would cover fine because he's obviously getting a save tier every game because he's got to. He's still the, the top man. scoring goalkeeper in the game. I, I think, think he, he is, isn't he? He probably still. is, but I, I really like Wednesday the 24th, almost anything that's Manchester United punty when they play Sheffield United. So even Rashford, Fernandez, Hoyland, Garnacho's a great price at 7.5. Dallo, I think there's loads even from a differential perspective you could look at. If Martinez was back fit, that would maybe be interesting, but we're not expecting that. The other single game, though, is more awkward. I know it's always more awkward when it's a Friday night as well. That's Luton against Everton. Now, for Luton, there is no entry point. I remember someone asking me a couple of weeks ago because I'd said that I'd projected Luton to have a Friday night game at the end. Not this one, though, against West Ham the following weekend. That's probably not the case now. But those sitting there with Morris or Barkley or, or even Doughty might be looking at their team going, I'm going to leave that for the captaincy. I'm not sure that's necessarily advisable. And as well, there is big ent entry point for Everton. So my plan's possibly looking at Jordan Pickford now. Every time I look at Everton, he's the best asset. We had this problem a couple of months ago when they played Palace, then, if you remember, on the Monday night. As in entry now for the Chelsea game? No, I think probably one more. So, I mean, with, with Everton, you've got choices, right? So if you're like me and I've got David Raya, there's three choices. I can go for the Everton, uh, the Chelsea game. I can go for the Nottingham Forest game, or I can go for the Liverpool game. But then, and, sorry, and all of them get a game. Onana. So Anana's not going to then be your Manchester United choice, surely? Yeah, but it, it can be now because after that, when you've had Pickford on the Friday night, you can have Anana on the Monday night. Oh, so you'd go, that. you'd go. You're talking about going in on Monday the sixth. What for Man for Anana yeah, specifically? Well, yeah. that wouldn't that wouldn't have been my plan. My plan was Wednesday the twenty fourth, but my plan now probably is right Raya to Pickford to Anana. That's what I've yeah, got in mind I, now. I've got I've got a different thought in my mind um, with Everton. I was looking at Van Heck to Branthwaite on Monday coming because um, they're around that similar sort of price point, and I can keep Van Heck through. But they've got. Liverpool in there. I mean, Brentford at home, but not Forest. Brentford at home, Luton away. You have a fixture, right? Those five. It's not bad. So Brentford in, but that means then Raya to Onana is open to me on Wednesday the twenty fourth. So then I've got my Everton coverage and I've got my Onana coverage there, and I've got my three fixtures of David Raya prior to making that move potentially. So I think Brentford's going to end up being my solution. I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much money on Everton, right? No, I don't even know if you can really. Um, I don't even have to have players that are priced expensive, but Brantford is as cheap as you get. So I think that will probably be my strategy is Brantford on the Monday, leave Raya in and Onana on the 24th based on what you've suggested there. Yeah, I think I'm kind of looking at Raya to pick for Sunday the 21st to miss okay. Raya against Chelsea. I'd still have Gabriel and Saliba probably in place at that point yep. and pick Pickford up for the Forest game. Mm -hmm. That's my current thinking for there. Also, obviously, Liverpool are the, the later kickoff that day. And with just two, it does give me a backup captaincy option if I'm concerned about Van Dijk and Salah for any particular reason. It's unlikely. I think particularly Van Dijk almost definitely plays at Fulham. But if I was concerned about Salah, it does give me another alternative captaincy option. I mean, Everton against Forest or Arsenal against Chelsea. One thing about Chelsea is who scored goals. It's true. So that's true. the point I'm looking at potentially doing it. And if, if I'm going there, then it's Pickford four for two over Raya. And the two Raya games I don't miss are Chelsea at home and Tottenham away. And it becomes obviously effective five for two with the Luton captaincy in there as well. And the week after, they, they've got Sheffield United. There is then a case subject to where that lands. There might even be one final three for one for a goalkeeper um, at the end, if you held on. But as said, for me, it's probably Pickford to Anana then. Monday the sixth, but I'm, I might not search because there's every chance I'll have some something else. Manchester United, um, in terms of coverage. One really interesting thing I've looked at, at my plans. I keep ending up with loads of money in the bank at the end. <laughs> loads. They don't let you keep it. No, loads, loads of money at the end. Um, I think that might be a theme for people because if you if you do cut out people like Salah, and you're not throwing in your De Bruyne's or Rashford's and stuff, you, you're actually going to end up with money spare at the end does mean that you can take some wild punts right at the end if you've got transfers in hand. But it's something potentially to know. This where I, if I go Gabriel Saka this week with a 0 0.1 in the bank, that's 
after that, the moves I then make afterwards, it it never gets tight again. Cool. Um, uh, should we just just to cover obviously oh. Sunday the fifth off just briefly as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Two selected games are uh, well. Chelsea West Ham is actually not a, a TV game. It's moved because of the Chelsea Tottenham announcement. Liverpool Tottenham is is a four thirty kickoff. Um, Brighton and Aston Villa will also move from the Saturday to the Sunday if Aston Villa are obviously still in the Conference League. So there's enough choice there for captaincy on the Saturday before that. City are at home to Wolves. Arsenal v Bournemouth is the early kickoff, but I, I think there's a fair chance I might not have any Arsenal at that point. Ironically, so and it's worth saying with a twelve thirty kickoff that might potentially be after a Wednesday night in the Champions League, and they could have the following Tuesday under that circumstance. You might have some rotation, and it's, it's worth bearing in mind. I think Newcastle for that Saturday. There's the entry point of Wednesday the twenty fourth. You pick up Crystal Palace and Sheffield United fixtures that day. They go to Burnley. Saturday the 4th. And I don't think it's improbable that you'd land on that Saturday and think, shit, I'm really worried about my Manchester City assets here and I've got no Arsenal. Having some Newcastle in the background might really help. I'm looking at, oh, despite how shit they are defensively, I think I'm looking at picking up Cher or Trippier on Wednesday the 24th. Not uh, an attacking asset, Gordon, or... Oh yeah, Alexander Isak as well. Mm. But I'm just I'm looking at a defensive okay. asset over that period as well. Fair play. Cool. Uh, Captain for this weekend, let's rattle through that and then you can give us the stats and numbers from the weekend just gone. Um, pick a City player for Saturday for me. Wait and, see, wait and see the team. If Haaland's in it, straightforward. If Haaland, if Rodri's in it, he's my second choice. If not, I mean, Foden did come off with... Uh, with that kick yesterday, but hopefully it's not Actually, too bad. You watched, we both watched the game. Yeah. It looked like he got done down the back of his Achilles. Yeah. Pep said after the game, I don't that think it was, it was the worst tackle. Like, I don't think it was maliciously trying to hurt him there, but he did catch him. Well, after the game, badly. Pep said it was a knock, and Foden himself said he's got a minor dead leg. Yeah. A bit odd. He went down like he was hurt, though. Mm. Um, so, any one of those three, though, is my captaincy option. Uh, for Saturday. There's every chance by the time the 12.30 deadline comes around that you'll have a good indication of some of the City lineup. I think. Mm -hmm. For me, I'll I'll be captain Haaland unless there's serious reasons to think he won't play. Like I said, I think with that four-day spacing, and also, it sounds dull, he's not playing well. He needs a, like a, a haul, and that's right there in front of him. He scored five the last time he played them, so I don't, I don't really want to argue with that one. So Haaland for me, Saturday. Uh, Holland in the top 1k 96.4 percent uh, on the Sunday. James, can you look past Salah? No, not particularly. 98.5 percent in the top 1k, James. And on the Monday, can you look past Cole Palmer? No, so straightforward 99.9 percent mm. in the top 1k. So, in terms of captaincy over this weekend, you're talking about 96, 98, and 99 percent. It's unlikely that we're going to see much. Uh, but it's it's, it's picking that. your battles, right? It's I know people. Oh, I need a differential captain. You just I think you look at this weekend. And you could make a case to take on City, particularly maybe on Saturday. But I don't think the alternatives are great. You know, Solanke against Manchester United or Sun at Newcastle. And I don't think it's good enough. So you pick your battles when you look at things coming forward and the potential rotations in future weeks. As kind of highlighted, yeah, like things like Isak. Saturday, May the 4th is the sort of one where, yeah, if you're going to go against it, go against it there, for example, maybe. Feels like perhaps a, a better choice. I, I can't see much reason to take on those three this week. I think you're just hurting yourself if you do under that scenario. Understood. Cool. Uh, let's rattle through some of the stats from the weekend, if you don't mind, sir. And then we'll go through. I'm going to have a look at some of the questions that we've had in on Tinternet. And, uh Yeah. Yeah, I won't go into too much detail here because, I mean, there's so many teams you can just write off of your thinking now, basically. Agreed. I mean, the teams that don't have, any, you know, single game days or the extra fixtures coming up, and even some that do, I just think it's a write-off. Um, Arsenal-Luton last Wednesday, just to go back to that, so again, the theme of passing numbers not being high against Luton. Saliba, 72. Gabriel, 60. Party, 62. That was it. There were some big numbers for the Brighton players at Brentford, but very interesting, Jan Paul Van Heck was not one of them. So 39 passes completed to Lewis Dunks, 82, and Igor Julio's 89. They very much formed a back three, and Van Heck was to the right of that. 
it doesn't explain why Julio still had a bigger number than Dunk. They obviously went down the left-hand side a lot. They did that against Liverpool yep. the, and the Sunday before as well. Balaber in midfield, 70. Pascal Gross, 119. João Pedro back. He obviously didn't start against Arsenal on Saturday. If people can find their route, that might be an interesting differential for the run-in. The, the entry point, probably Sunday the 28th. If he didn't play against Man City on, on the, the midweek before, Sunday the 28th for João Pedro against Bournemouth could be interesting. Uh, from City Villa game, um, Vardiol and Rico Lewis tier one passing, Akanji, Diaz and Rodri tier two. Diaz and Vardio also with tackle tier. Rodri with a shot tier as well, the joker. Foden, Doku, Alvarez also in the shots on that fixture. Uh, from Liverpool, Sheffield United, no surprise to see some big Liverpool numbers. Tier two passing for Gomez, Van Dijk, Canate, McAllister and Shabosh Lai. Also a goal and a tackle tier for Alexis McAllister who's ticking over really nicely. I think a lot will ignore this Sunday. And I tell you what, he's as likely as anyone to keep playing for Liverpool after Van Dijk, I think. You've and kept. Co- uh, you've answered about five of the questions that we had on Twitter. There, where people are looking at McAllister. Yeah, I, I don't mind as an option. I think I might. If I if I'm going in, uh, he may be one that I add to uh, Van Dyke and. I think and, he's uh, he's highly unlikely to work for me, um, because I'm not making so many moves this week. I don't foresee it being a captaincy. I think I'm going to let it go personally. But yeah, if people want to buy Alexis McAllister at the weekend, I completely understand that. Uh, from the chaos Chelsea Manchester United game, uh, Enzo Fernandez, the only player to hit pass in tier 66 passes, uh, Anana with a six saves, Garnacho with a shot tier, Cole Palmer with shot tier two, five shots on target. Uh, from Palace Manchester City, um, in the Saturday lunchtime kickoff, some big numbers for City defensive players, Ruben Diaz, 140 passes completed, John Stones, 108. Uh, Josko Vardiol, 62. Rico Lewis was 52. Jack Grealish, 58. Even Oscar Bob, 38. Kevin De Bruyne, 61 passes completed. And two shots on target to go with his two goals and assists. Nice hole there. Rodri just with the 99 passes. Have a flake with that. Uh, from Philip Villa Brentford, Consa, 81 passes. Louise and Tielemann is just into tier one. Ollie Watkins with a nice return uh, of two goals and a shot here. What's Watkins' ownership down to, Serge? So top uh, 1K. Let's have a that look must have dropped off. Absolutely massive, I should imagine, but some will still have. 2.7%. My goodness. I tell 30% you what, overall. So there's a big gap between. Um, uh, the top 1k and overall but a, a, few, a few have held and I know why it's Sunday the 21st against Bournemouth at home mm. that's a very debatable because we said Ooh, the Liverpool Fulham is not the early kickoff and I've mentioned even Pickford as an alternative for me maybe Villa at home to Bournemouth I think Watkins owners on that Sunday should captain him if you've still kept him I'm going to guess that's the reason why is that you want to go there then you can chain that on to any of the teams playing in the, in the midweek afterwards, should you want to, or hold for the Chelsea game, might even be more advisable. And then you dip that into Tottenham the next Sunday or in the midweek if the Arsenal fixture moves. Um, from Everton, Burnley, uh, Esteve and Cullen, tier one passing. Uh, Mikalenko in the tackles. He's he's an interesting alternative one to Jared Branthwaite if people want for the Everton single game day. I'd, I'd only be looking defensively. Personally, I wouldn't be looking at anything offensively from them. Uh, from Fulham, Newcastle. I think Fulham very much fall into that category of teams you can rule out now. Uh, Bassi and Kearney in tier one passing. Jao Paulinho with his usual six tackles. Uh, more interesting for Newcastle, Anthony Gordon and Alexander Isak with a shot here. Um, Newcastle struggled for large periods of that game, but a clean sheet would be a psychological boost. Uh, from Luton, Bournemouth, no passing tiers, nothing overly to speak of. Colton Morris did hit a uh, shot tier netto with seven saves. Um, obviously, with a tier two saves, there's a few that will still have him. As discussed last week, the Bournemouth exit point's a little bit awkward because of the additional Wolves fixture. Um, if the Brighton City game stays Thursday 25th, I wonder if people look then at, say, Solanke to João Pedro because they can't afford Solanke to a City player, for example. Uh, from Wolves West Ham, uh, Kilman, Santiago Bueno and Jao Gomez all in the passing. And on Gomez, Serge, nine tackles completed. He, if he stays at Wolves, 
if he's an enabling price next season, he's going to be really interesting. We, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, agree with that. But I think people are going to spot what's happening here. He's like second or third for tackles now. Mm. Um, and he does in chip league. in a little bit with some attacking bits and pieces as well. Well, yeah, even that. I mean, part, you've got a passing tier as well. It's a little mm. bit rare, and we know that can happen against West Ham more than other teams. But yeah, there's little bits there. Uh, Flappy with six saves. Surge, any update on Ariola? No news yet. Guessing people sold anyway. You must have, um, must have sold. From Brighton, Arsenal, only one player hit a tier for Arsenal. Any guesses? Declan Rice. It was Leandro Trossard with a shot tier, Surge. Oh, a tier. I thought you said a passing tier. Any Sorry. tier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any tier. Sub- substitute wow. Leandro Trossard. Two shots on target to go with three completed passes Man. in his half hour on the pitch. Uh, Jorginho with 50 was Arsenal's most for passing. Lewis Dunk, 100. And, and yet they dominated that game, though, as well. Oh, yeah, they, they well deserve to win. Lewis Dunk, 100 passes completed. This is why people yeah. love it so much. Uh, Van Heck, 62. And Pascal Gross, 68 for Tier 1 passing. Uh, there's also tackle tiers for Lamptey and Adingra and a shot Tier 4 in Sisso. Uh, from Manchester United, Liverpool. Liverpool's two centre-backs in the passing. Van Dijk, Tier 1, 65 passes completed. Jarrell Quanta, Tier 2, 81 passes completed. Give him an extra bonus one for the pass to Bruno Fernandes, who had a shot Tier. So too did Luis Diaz, Mo Salah, shot Tier 2 at least got something with the penalties for obviously those who captained him on Sunday. A few United players in the tackles, Maguire, Dallow, Kobe Mino and Casemiro. So too was Alexis McAllister. Tier one tackles, five passes short of passing tier. Uh, From Sheffield United, Chelsea, quite a rotated Chelsea back line at the weekend. Chalava, Silva, Disasai, all in tier two passing. So too was Enzo Fernandez. Just the assist for Cole Palmer, captain as... And finally, from Tottenham and Nottingham Forest, Van der Ven, 67 passes completed. Christian Romero, 71 passes completed. Pedro Porro actually had 52. Wasn't miles off, but obviously rewarded owners with a goal this week. Mickey Van der Ven also had tackled here. Just a note, and I don't suppose anyone would look at this, but Pierre-Emil Hoiberg was excellent when he came on. Completed 52 passes in his second half. So um, changed the game. I'll speak about that more on our Patreon pod later today. Nice. Cool, cool. Uh, good. I've been through some of the questions on the internet in terms of X. Uh, follow James at Planet FPL Pod if you want to ask questions on the show. You have 50,000 followers, James. People must like what you tweet about. Have you just um, noticed? Where have you been? Well, they're not on Twitter, and that's why my I, mental health I is perfect. I don't, I, I, I don't tweet much these <laughs> days. That's also why my mental health is pretty good as well. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there's there's something in that, I think. Yeah, yeah, it could um, be. Cool. There's a, a few interesting questions that we've had in, uh, although I think we kind of sort of covered them in our conversation, maybe not answering them quite as specifically. Like Aiden Till, for example, as a Petrovic owner, should I be looking for a way out or stick with him because of the volume of fixtures? That Onana move seems so straightforward. Yeah, James possibly. After Possibly. Arsenal, just move it straight on for Sheffield United? Well, the more the problem is, what do you do if Petrovic isn't the team on Monday night? Do you consider going Sanchez? I don't think I would. No, you'd go Pickford then, surely, at that point. And then that covers you off the Luton That's, single Do you know what? Though. That's absolutely the solution. If Petrovic isn't in the team Monday, buy Jordan Pickford if you can. I would, yeah. I would, would. If I was in that scenario, I'd be looking to manipulate the transfers to leave me the possibility to do that. If not, mm. then I'd be yeah, the Anana move Wednesday the twenty fourth probably. Um, I don't see Petrovic playing all the games that's left, and I wouldn't be surprised if Sanchez is in the team on Monday night. Yep, uh, Chris Hermitage. He's similar to me. He's got twenty transfers left. He says, "Who are the key five assets to bring in on Sunday to take advantage of the big gains?" Now, I've looked at it, James. Really. I've looked at Arsenal and Liverpool, and you've got a three for zero over the likes of City and Tottenham and what have you. And I did try and play devil's advocate and say, well, are there any other teams that are worth looking at just so that you don't end up doing what everybody does and gravitating towards the big teams in Liverpool and Arsenal? But no one else has got a 3-4-0. And there's a few with twos. Like you could say, do you want a little bit extra Chelsea or Fulham? Uh, uh, Maybe West Ham. I'll give give you one to go into on on Sunday. West Ham have got the Leverkusen either side of Fulham. Do you even want that? 
I, I tell so, you one. I tell you one on. I don't mind um, as a hop on, hop off. As it stands, Crystal Palace have a four for zero over Tottenham. Two home games against West Ham and Newcastle in there, and then, and then Fulham and away. Then Fulham away is reasonable, and it, because you're looking it, at it Liverpool, feels weird Liverpool. buying when they go to Anfield. But I, I get, get that. I get but under saying, that yeah. scenario, you would right. This, this yeah, give you 100%. this give you a scenario. You're already sitting there with like Saka, Salah. McAllister, Palmer, Son, right? Let's say that's your midfield five, and you don't. I don't want anything else. Arsenal, Liverpool, or something. You go. I really should move Son on, and you want to stay in that area with, say, a three-five-two system, which would be understandable at the moment. Yeah, why not Eva Eze for those four games? Mm-hmm. Why not? So, I, I, uh, if if someone said oh. to me, "I want to buy Eze on Sunday," I'm not going to tell anyone no. George, best captaincy and entry points for Luton Everton players for their single game day. We've talked about that already. Um, but obviously, Everton have got a, a few entry points that you could consider depending on where you're coming from. The, Luton, avoid. The the other thing, just a note on, because uh, there'll be other others, I think, like me, are thinking about maybe Raya to Pickford at some point. It's worth noting, obviously, if the Arsenal-Tottenham game moves back to the Saturday the 27th, uh, sorry, if the Forest... If the Forest and if the City and Arsenal City games Forest. both move to the yep. Saturday, Everton Brentford then becomes the Sunday, Sunday the twenty eighth. So that game is specifically linked to the Forest City. But if the Arsenal game moved as well, you could just go Raya to pick for Sunday the twenty eighth and just chain it. Then it's a three for zero effective with the captaincy, and you've only got Pickford for the two games. And I think under that circumstance, if that happens, so yeah, I would hold Raya through the Tottenham game. And then probably mm-hmm. go to Pickford Sunday 28th. The other beauty of that is that's given me one extra transfer for that potential midweek to dive into something else. And that would be a good reason to wait rather than say Sunday the 21st or Wednesday the 24th. And again, we'll know about this at the back end of next week before the weekend happens. It's going to be really late notice. We're not going to know till well, next next Thursday or Friday. Then we'll find out from there. So, I mean, if the Everton Brentford game moves to Sunday the twenty eighth and swaps with the Forest City game, there is no reason really not to buy an Everton player for Brentford at home and then captaincy against Lewin. I think that's really uh, straightforward. Yeah, I completely agree. And with I you. think in any case, I'm... even the not in the Forest game at home, Sunday the twenty first, sure there's Liverpool in there, but you're going to have four for one over plenty of teams at that point. So, and obviously you can do similar with going. Monday night. If someone wants to buy Jordan Pickford on Monday night against Chelsea, that's perfectly reasonable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Colin Johnson's doing what I'm doing. He's saying, is five transfers too many to use this weekend if you're coming off City, Brighton and Spurs? I'm coming off three City, one Spurs, one Brighton, and I'm going to use five transfers. So I'd have to say no. Um, just just crack on. And what the you, last question, go on. I was going to say is on that is what you've got to remember is if you go really hard on these teams, and that includes even people like Eze, pretty much pretty much anything you buy Sunday, Monday is going to be someone you consider selling later on. Just because of the extra fixtures that you know, Tottenham, Chelsea, May United, Newcastle, Brighton, and Man City are going to have later on, right? Yep. That's at least someone's going to have a three for one, I think, from the final weekend, even. So you're going to consider selling nearly all these players. And that includes the likes of Salah. If you don't own Salah and you're buying Salah this week, of course, buy him. But there's possibly a period where you're going to look at at wanting to move that on. So the harder you go, the harder you have to go again in many of these circumstances. And of course, you can keep your Salahs and your Sackers and your Salivas all the way through. Of course you can. I'm just saying, if you end up in a position where you've got eight of, say, from Arsenal-Liverpool come Sunday, that's going to be great but you're probably going to want to move five or six of them on again. And my intention is to get rid of all of what I've got and I'll have five. So whatever cool. you get is probably going again. Uh, James, that's a wrap for this episode of Planet Sky FF. Uh, listeners, if you want to support the show, we say each and every week, I'm sure you'll have heard it a thousand times. Uh, patreon.com forward slash planet FPL, where you can get access to James's fixture planning spreadsheet. You get access to a Slack community of active Sky managers. Uh, you get prize leagues and a whole bunch of other stuff as well, particularly if you're an FPL manager as well. Back at you, same time, same place next week. I'd say so. You ain't here though, are you? Nah, I am not. I've, um, got, I've got something planned. I don't, just don't know what yet, but I'll, I'll, be, here. <laughs> I'll be here next week, yeah. Listeners, thank you so much for your support. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, like button, whatever else you get told to do on any other podcast you listen to as well. Do it for us too. 
and uh, have a great week. Stay safe. Ciao for now. Thanks, everyone. Be nice to each other. Play it your way. Cue music, please. Man, child.